What's really amazing about Spring Boot actuators is the fact that it's so easy for any developer to add in their own Spring Boot actuator. You just write a little bit of Java code, create a basic Java bean, and that's it. There's really not even any configuration that you have to do. Well, maybe there's a little bit. You just have to make sure that the endpoint that you're creating gets exposed. And as unchristian as that sound, it is required. If you're just doing development, I would just suggest setting management.endpoints.web.exposure.includes equal to a bug splat and equal to a star and asterisk. And that's just going to include everything and everything is going to be made a whole lot easier for you. In order to create your own Spring Boot actuator after you've made sure that you've exposed everything, just come in and create a basic class. Doesn't implement interface doesn't extend anything. I'm just going to call it the snafu actuator. Click finish. And I'm going to add one method into this class. And this class is going to return a string. So it'll be public string. It will be my custom endpoint. And all you got to do here is return some JSON. Now you can I don't know, you can get some Jackson going or some parsers or whatever, but I'm just gonna return a hard-coded string and specifically, this might look a little ugly, but what do I have to do? Slash, not slash new line, but slash quote, say status. And I just want the status to say situation normal, all fired up, right? So there's the status. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. We're almost there. We do have three annotations that we need to throw on here. First of all, we need to throw the good old component annotation on there. We also need to specify that this is gonna be an actuator endpoint. So I'm gonna put in at endpoint ID equals snafu. And snafu will be the, the name of the endpoint. So someone will say localhost 8080 slash actuator slash snafu. And that should come up. And then finally right here, we want to specify that this will happen on a read operation. That is the last annotation that I need to add in. And it's not an end poing, it's an end point. Uh, that should get rid of the errors. Well, some errors. Do you actually see the, the red X there? If you see the red X, you need to get your eyes checked because that's a white X on a red background, but that's just because I haven't imported everything. So I will do the import. Make sure that the endpoint that you bring in is from the actuate package. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, you're going to run into a little bit of trouble here. And by the way, I do hate the way the server keeps restarting. Please check out my tutorial on application properties that you can set that make your life easier. And one of them is something that will stop that from starting and stopping constantly when you're doing chores. Okay, I think that all looks good. The server did stop and start. It's just annoyed me. So um, I should be able to go into my browser. Where did my browser go? And I'm going to type in localhost 8080 slash actuator slash snafu. And when I go snafu, oh, I got to spell it correctly. Snafu. Give me a, a second to just bring this up. And now when I go take a lot, it scared me a little bit there. Um, that's one thing I do dislike about Spring and Java. You have to spell things correctly. They really... They need to fix that in the next release or something like that. But there you go. A little bit of JSON, return, status, situation, normal, all fired up. That is how easy it is to create your own Spring Boot actuator endpoint. Let me just bring that up one more time so that we can see the, the, the code full screen. And there you go. If you watch this full tutorial from start to finish, you learned how to configure, you learned how to invoke, you learned all the cool endpoints, and you even learn to create your own. I think that is uh, awesome, pretty cool stuff that you can do with Spring Boot actuators.